Hello and welcome to this video. Thank you for joining me today. This is a video on how to practice Chopin's Revolutionary Etude. Uh, I also made a video in conjunction with this one, my performance of it at a moderate speed. So look that up. I actually made it the same day. In fact, I just made it like half an hour ago so it can fit into the theme of this particular video. Uh, before I go on, uh, I want to invite you to become a member of the Well-Rounded Pianist at wellroundedpianist.com. It is an incredible website. As I speak, there are over 2,200 videos on there for VIP members only. They're not available on YouTube. I teach piano all throughout the world on Skype, and I want to be your personal professor on the Well-Rounded Pianist. So do yourself a favor and go and join today. It is the the most incredible site. I'm not just saying that because it's my site, but if you compare it with everything on the internet, I believe mine has the most videos and the most content out of any other website in the world for one person. I'm not talking large um, companies, you know, like Piano Marvel and that sort of thing that have many employees and have many more videos than I do, but for a private person, for one person putting out videos, content every week, over 2,200 videos, I want you to find a website that has more to offer than that, and you won't find it. <laughs> so go to The Well-Rounded Pianist. I love this site. I put all my heart and soul into it. So I will teach you piano. I will teach you all aspects of piano on The Well-Rounded Pianist. Okay, now my advertisement is over. Let's talk about the revolutionary etude. First, I have some questions for you. Do you know what the average level is, the average grade level for pianists in the world today? If you took all the piano students, um, all the piano students in the world, not professional concert pianists, but if you took the, your average student in the world, all countries, and uh, put them into a pot and took their average grade level, do you know what it would be? Well, I'm almost certain, and you know, I've read this in places, that it's around grade three or four. So it's not that high. Actually, it's like an intermediate level uh, because, and the reason is because most piano students end up foiling or quitting. You know, they take a few years, and it's very common. They'll take a few years as a kid, maybe, you know, five years or something when they're a kid, when they're a child. Then they'll quit, they'll go through life, and, you know, I've heard this a thousand times as a teacher. And then they get to be middle-aged, and they say, oh, I wish I would have stuck with piano. And then they have to uh, relearn it, and and, and that sort of thing. But they're, they're about grade three, grade four. So most students in the world, if you took an average, are grade three or grade four. They are not concert pianists. They are not child prodigies. They are just average people, average Joes and average Susans and Marys around the world learning piano. We live in a different age today totally different age than in Chopin's day. In Chopin's day, everyone was trying to be a virtuoso. Today, people just want to play and have fun. But that being said, Chopin's revolutionary etude is one of the most uh, popular pieces in the repertoire. And as much as I don't like it, uh, intermediate level pianists, like grade three and grade four pianists are attempting this. That's okay. It's my job to teach that to those students. So I view my role on uh, as I teach Skype throughout the world and on the Well-Rounded Pianist and on YouTube as I'm a piano teacher to the world. I'm a piano teacher of piano teachers. I teach to the common person. You take most most other piano teachers around on YouTube teaching the revolutionary to they're teaching to virtuosi. They play fast, they expect you to play fast, and that's not how I am. 
So, my approach to teaching is much different than most other teachers. I'm going to teach you the nuts and bolts of this piece. Now, you need to just slow down, keep your ego at home. Just leave your ego at home when you start to work on this. Don't listen to recordings, don't go and listen to the, to the latest and greatest uh, virtuoso play this because it will just upset you and, and you, know, you, you won't be able to attain that. So we need to approach this realistically as an intermediate or upper intermediate level pianist. If you were a concert pianist or a child prodigy, you don't need to be watching this video now. This video is for the common person trying to learn the revolutionary attitude. Now, let me start by saying that you need to learn from beginning to end at one tempo with few or no mistakes, few or no note mistakes in addition to observing the dynamics and, and pedaling and everything like that. But I believe to attain that, you must first do everything with no pedal, no pedal at all. So let's start with no pedal from the beginning at a slow speed. Did you notice I brought out all the accents? Bring out all the accents. Most students ignore those. They just want to just get through it as quickly as they can and they ignore the accents. So you need to observe the accents. Also observe when I got down here, after the accents going down, then it Come softer, like piano. A little bit more. A little bit more. Then you're at your forte again. Little accents, little crescendos and decrescendos. Notice something. Forte here. Forte. Softer. It's actually piano. It's hard to get a true piano, but you want to be a little softer level there. Forte. the legato here. It's humanly impossible to play legato, so don't even try. Don't try to do 5, 4, and all this stuff here. Then you can't... It says legato. You can't do that legato. It's impossible. Well, why did Chopin mark that? Well, because it's with pedal. So when you use pedal, it will sound somewhat legato, but you're not really doing a full legato in the right hand. You're playing legato in the left hand, though. Also notice... Notice this. Notice 
is something else that it says to play the left hand legato, but here it, you have, there's a caveat to this because when you do fast arpeggios like this, don't try to connect, don't try to put your finger over your thumb and make that totally legato because it's, it's really bad technique to twist and turn all the time when you're doing this kind of arpeggio quickly. So it's best to keep your hands set and put a break. So here's a break. There's a two note slur. Then you just travel over. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's a five note slur here. Then you break because you don't you can't put your thumb under your fourth finger, move your arm way over and try to connect it. There's no time for that. So, so you have to you have a five note slur. You 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 break break there. That you have a three note slur. Break. tiny breaks in there when you're changing your hand position you're not twisting and turning and trying to put your finger over your thumb and your thumb under your fingers so a little faster it looks like this with no pedal It's not a total 100% legato, but when you add pedal, when you add pedal, you can't hear those breaks. It goes by so quickly. Now let's take it from... try to play four and five and everything there they try to there's no differentiation just make it marcato but don't try to make it legato it's it's not you can't play it legato it's a, it's actually not musical to play it legato there da 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 it's not yeah 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 so don't let these legato lines fool you, because when you add pedal, it's going to be fine. So we have, we have, I go five, 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 five. take note of when you learn it. It's he's going into another key. He has a B flat major. Ah, now we have a forte. Now it comes down a little in volume. Now, now he reaches G sharp minor. Notice 
notice something. Notice that it sounds really dry when you don't have pedal. You really want pedal there. You, I want pedal there. It sounds very naked and dry, but that's the, that's the whole point of doing it. You want to hear everything be without pedal. Then when you add pedal, it's going to be that much better. So a piece will only be as good with pedal as it is without pedal. So I know it's dry without pedal and there's breaks and things that you don't want to be there, but nevertheless, it's good to practice without pedal before you start adding the pedal. So then we have also notice these accents. A lot of pianists ignore these. You have right on the second beat, you have an accent there. accent on that second beat there. This is like probably the high point of the piece in terms of dynamics. Uh, a couple pages later there might be also another one, but this is a fortissimo here. fingers higher than they need to go when you're doing these arpeggios so you really get a lift to your fingers don't don't try to stay really 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 close to the keys we will stay closer to the keys the faster you go but the slower you go the more you need to exaggerate the finger motion to where you're coming high so you see how high the fingers are coming off the keys you want to Really exaggerate that, and as you speed it up, those motions will become less and less. Okay, now let's go where I took off here. Accents. be caught with the pedal. So I know it doesn't sound good without pedal because there's a there's a gap but when you, when you when you put pedal the pedal will catch that jump there. Forte. I know you have three, you have three against four here. Don't try to measure it out. Just feel the beat and just play a somewhat of a triplet in your right hand and a quadruplet in your left hand. So we have. There, you really want to open up your spider fingers. One, two, four, five. It's hard. I have to admit, I can't get it every time either. But you want to move your arm like a cartwheel motion and start the A before the beat. So the the measure before. Uh, right about right after you play the C. So, like that. So it'll be a little before the beat. So then, by the time you get to the downbeat, you'll you'll be there. That's a tough play. 
place, but the better you get your left hand, the better you get your hand automatic to where you don't have to think about it, then it won't be that hard anymore for the right hand for you to fit in those triplets. Make sure you hold the F and the A flat down. Don't let go of it. Now, play soft. I like to just hold this. You know, when we have, when you have that, you have, he puts rests there. I don't think he should have done that. Actually, I like to just hold it, and it's going to die away by itself, but I, I think it's better to just hold it and let it die away than it is to exterminate all the sound there. So if I, if I were Chopin's professor and he gave me this composition, I would tell him, uh, I'd say, hey, Frederick, you need to just hold that over this measure because it's much better that way. You don't want to extinguish that sound so soon. Hold it. Hold your right hand. Now. Now we have that. This is the low point of the piece. This is like this, the silence before the storm. <laughs> get that the storm comes then you have fortissimo you have your stormy uh, military ending there uh, this is a such a powerful piece so what you need to do when you learn this, I'm not going to have time to go over pedaling in this video, but you need to learn from beginning to end at one speed without any major uh, mistakes. And that's your base speed. Now you get that base tempo, whatever that may be for you. It might be 50, it might be 60, whatever that, it might be even be 40 uh, per quarter note, whatever it may be for you. Get that bass speed, and then work at it from there. Then gradually, systematically speed it up after that. If you try to speed it up too soon, you'll never get it. It will just all become just a wash, and uh, all of your work will be in vain if you, if you don't uh, get something from it. It has to be accurate. So I advocate a slow tempo with no pedal at first. Um, you know, something maybe in the 50s or 60s. You know, say, I have a 54 is here. So if you could go put it on 54. If you could do
do the whole thing like that. then you're yeah you're standing on solid ground so thank you for joining me go watch my uh performance of this at a moderate speed and i do add some pedal there so you'll be able to hear the pedal in that go to the well-rounded pianist you're invited to join until we meet again <laughs>